how many of you are excited about driverless vehicle? How would driverless vehicle influence our transportation safety? The driver, the insurance company, the auto company, and the traffic rules. Today, I'm going to answer these questions by explaining the human factor issue in the coming age of driverless vehicle. Driving is a great pleasure, and it's a survival need for every one of us in America. But sometimes, driving can be tiresome or even painful. From time to time, we feel that we need to drive even when we are drunk, distracted, and drowsy. My job is to persuade you, don't do this stuff when you drive. <laughs> and for some of us, we may have difficulty to drive. We may need to continue our driving, such as with the assistance of a low vision telescope. Just like the old saying puts, to all is human. Human error is the third major contributing factor of the top 10 global causes of liability loss by the total value of claims. It accounted for as many as 19% of the total liability losses. To relieve human from the driving pains, driving difficulty, and human error, scientists and engineers like me have been inventing technology to improve uh, driving safety and reduce human error. One of the latest solutions is the driverless vehicle. By definition, a driverless vehicle is a robotic vehicle that is designed to travel between destinations without a human operator. By uh, its meaning, without a human operator, we thought it's exempt from human error, is it? The driverless vehicle is armed with lots of the sensors, such as uh, the uh, radar system, the leader system, and the camera system. It can do a lot of fancy features, such as the traffic sound recognition, collision avoidance system, or park the vehicle for you automatically. This uh, figure shows how the driverless vehicle scans the environment with its camera system and the radar system. A lot of IT companies, uh, auto companies, are competing uh, in this race of driverless vehicles, such as uh, General Motors, BMW, Google, Chang'an, uh, and Uber like that. The uh, graph on the left shows Google's driverless vehicle, which probably is the most popular. When and where can you sell a driverless vehicle? The state uh, government are pretty supportive of uh, the driverless vehicle industry. In uh, 2017, as many as uh, 33 states have introduced legislation and driverless vehicle. You probably can see a driverless vehicle in California, Nevada, or Florida. The automation levels of driverless vehicle is categorized into five. For level zero, there is no any fancy features. It's probably a car in 1960s. In level one, these cars can handle one task at a time, such as automatic braking. And level two, these cars could have at least two automatic features. This level one and level two are the cars uh, which we can buy right now. It's the fancy features the vehicle dealers are trying to sell us. The level three, these cars can handle dynamic driving tasks, but might still need human interventions. In level four, these cars are officially driverless in certain environments. In level five, these cars don't need the presence of a human driver. So strictly speaking, level three and level four driverless vehicle are not driverless in all scenarios. Our current technology is, we are referred to is in level three. Just like a PC can turn blue, to R is machine too. Everybody are very familiar with this. So uh, an example is that the Tesla uh, driver was killed in a fatal crash using the, the autopilot features. It happened because the autopilot failed to recognize the white side of the tractor trailer against a 
brightening its sky. Another example is Google's self-driving vehicle crashed with a bus. When this time happened, the driver's uh, Google's autonomous vehicle saw a car approaching in the left side of the mirror and believed the car would stop or slow down to let the Google's autonomous vehicle continue to drive. Approximately three seconds later, the Google's, uh, as the Google's autonomous vehicle re-entered the center of the lane, it made contact with the bus. The advanced driverless vehicle still make accident because of the insufficient consideration of the limitation of driverless vehicle and the ignorance of the human factor issues. Here are uh, several human factor issues we should consider for driverless vehicle. The first one is situational awareness. The driverless vehicle relies on the camera and a radar system to scan the sense. The uh, computer vision uh, algorithm the camera uses uh, detect objects in the driving sense, such as a car, a traffic sign, or pedestrians. But the computer vision algorithm often lacks the ability to predict the future action of the animals in the environment, which is the level three of situational awareness. In this graph on the left, it's very easy for the human eye to predict that the box behind the car is likely to fall. We should be cautious when we drive below it. But the computer vision algorithm, it can only detect the existence of the box behind the tractor or when it's on the ground. It that cannot detect it and predict the box is likely to fail. It can only detect it when it is on the ground which might be too late for driving safety. The second issue is uh, trust and complacency. Automation is not 100% reliable. Over trust and complacency can lead to disastrous uh, accident when the automation fails. In this cartoon, the police is writing a road complacency ticket for the driver who has been driving so well. In real life, a husband often brags about his driving skills. It's very important for the wife to remind the husband that he should not be so complacent about his driving skills because his driving skills may not be as good as he thought he is. Um, you may ride your driving vehicle safe and sound for at least 200 years, 200 days, and pretty confident about it. But just imagine, uh, in this picture on the right, this shows a very demanding nighttime driving in a raining day. And your driverless vehicle suddenly wake you up and alert you, you need to take over the control because it needs a reboot. The third issue is, uh, is insurance and legal issues. Who must carry motor vehicle insurance? And how to allocate liability issue when crash occurs? The liability law we make should make a good balance between predict, protecting the customer and the law should not hinder the development of driverless vehicle technology. The fourth one is customer acceptance. According to a recent survey in 2016, 55% of customers said they would not ride in an autonomous vehicle, and 50% says manufacturers should bear responsibility for an accident. And only 25% of them are willing to pay more for a driverless vehicle to cover the manufacturer's liability in case of an accident. The fifth one is the security and privacy issues. Just like a hacker can access computer and steal our identity, it's very concerning that if your boss know when you go to a bar in your driverless vehicle, and it's more worrisome that he could control your steering wheel and drive you back to your office. <laughs> the last one, but the not the least, is control takeovers. Driverless vehicle technology is not 100% reliable, for example, the Google's driverless vehicle currently cannot drive 
at a speed more than 40 miles per hour. It happens because uh, Google's driverless vehicle get a slow ticket uh, in uh, 2016. So when a control uh, takeover is needed, it's very important for us to uh, access whether the driver is capable of taking the control. In these cases, technology such as uh, eye tracker, like this, to evaluate whether the driver is capable of taking control are very important. In the past several years, we have been de developing technology to sense the state of human. For example, as many of you know, uh, I do a lot of work using Google Glass. Uh, and Google Glass has a proximity sensor, which is uh, highlighted in the red circle, pointing towards the eyes. And uh, when we, our eyes blink, it will cause a spike in the value of the, the proximity sensor, as this figure shows. And we can use this proximity sensor of Google Glass to detect eye blinks, which is a reliable uh, measurement of driver fatigue. Alternatively, if you say, I don't have a Google Glass, you can use a smartphone. We have developing a smartphone um, application um, to detect driver fatigue. You can mount your smartphone and, and, and the dashboard and point it towards the driver, and you use a camera to detect the human face, the eyes, and count the height of the dark pupil, and use this to evaluate whether your eye is blinking or not. And thus, we can monitor driver fatigue too. Similarly, the CEO of Lavadia announced the AI Copilot at CES 2017. And their AI Copilot can do face recognition, high tracking, gaze tracking, and lip reading. So in the age of driverless vehicle, unlike what the lame driverless vehicle may suggest, drivers still plays an important role, if not more important than currently. We should integrate human factor and technology to combine the strengths of human driver and robotic driver to make driving safer. That's all for today's talk. I hope you drive back home safely every day. Thank you.